Hey, what's going on guys? It's day two of driving the Bronco as my daily. And as you can see, we're working on the truck. I lucked out today. We're working on a project a couple hours north of me. So I was just picked up in the work truck and really didn't have to drive much on my own. And that worked out because yesterday I discovered my alternator is bad. So I'm gonna replace this out. It's just outside of warranty period. So I went and I ordered one online that's going to be a high output and should work pretty good with all my extra electronics. That being said though, I need to drive this thing tomorrow. So I'm going to my spare one. I kept this one in the back of the truck. This is my spare alternator. It came with the 7.3 when I got it. So you can see it's a little crappy, but I'll clean that up and it uh, should last me hopefully a week or two. So that's the first project today. And uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna give you a full update of my mileage and the miles per gallon I get this week. Now, first thing, I'm gonna try to clean this up a little bit before I put it on, at least the pulley. So I'm looking at the engine in here. And one of the big goals of this series is not only keep the Bronco on the road for as long as I need it as a daily, but also improve it and its capabilities off-road and uh, for trips. So one of the things I mentioned was one of these fans not working and it wasn't really a big deal because the truck never got hot and it didn't get off-roading, but I want it to be operable. So I had a feeling one of these was bad and uh, that one looks good. But this one here, it does not. It looks like it melted and it must have blown the fuse or something, one of the terminals didn't, something happened. But uh, yeah, I'll check and see if it's blown, but I'd be willing to bet that this thing melted. So uh, I'm gonna replace these cheap mini fuse holders with full size fuse holders. And that'll just be another thing, you know, improved, so. We'll get to that, but first let me take off these battery terminals and get that alternator out. Got the one pulled from the truck, that's bad. Got my original to the 7.3 here. So I'm gonna go throw that on and see if it works. This one's even quieter. There, it works like a charm. On to the next project. So I went and checked this fuse. That fuse does test good. So uh, this is all melted here. I'll have to go grab some zip ties, but I made this new little harness to go put in there. Nice new fuse holders, 30 amp fuses. And uh, I'll replace these cheap Charlie ones and uh, hopefully we'll be good. All right, we got our moment of truth. Key in. Fans on. Let's see how many kicked on. Got all four, so that's sick. This seems to be our issue. Now on to our next thing. I think that's going to be pulling out this catch can. And I'm just going to run from the crankcase vent, which is there, up to here. That'll be pretty simple, and hopefully we'll get rid of some of my smoking at idle and on the trails and stuff. So I pulled that catch can out, and I'm gonna run a new hose from in there to up here. But this thing leaked oil everywhere. Got oil in my socket set, dripped all through here. So it must've been pretty full. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was all plugged up. So I opened up the catch can, drained it out and it wasn't full but there was a significant amount of oil in there so I don't know if this is causing back pressure on the uh, crankcase vent but we'll run it like it's recommended we'll see now I'm gonna go dump this garbage because no one else will do it hose is in now to do something else simple in the back all right just swapped out this relay in the back for the window we'll test that but I'm pretty sure this was defective and only worked part of the time. 
Switch is still finicky, so uh, yeah, we'll figure that out another day. Can't be a daily driver without driving it daily. So uh, I had to go grab some things from Walmart. So I hopped on the highway and came over to the old Wally Mart. You can see how much dirt's on the outside of my windows. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna run inside for some stuff. But what's really nice about driving this thing instead of the nice new truck is I will park right by the cart corrals and not really care. Try dinging me. Doesn't work. That's it for tonight. I should have got a little video of this thing going on the highway, but uh, we've got many days ahead of us for that. So we'll check in tomorrow for day three. Good morning, guys. It is day three and I'm on my way to work. Cruising the back roads, Bronco's doing good. As you can see, the wheel needs to be aligned a little bit better. That might be a job for uh, next time I'm working on it. But the alternator is charging and uh, last night were pretty good not too much smoke on startup so uh very successful let's keep cruising on here on day three we're on day four of daily driving this thing forgot to take a lot of video yesterday but uh went to work in the car is about 75 miles and the truck drove good right now i'm just going to go check make sure my steering's all tight before i hit the road and today i'm going to need to get some fuel and fill up so I'll go and uh, track my mileage from there and get a mileage on this truck. And uh, yeah, that'll be about it. So let's get trucking. I'm pretty happy I checked my steering. Everything looks tight, except for over here. This nut backed off a little bit. And I think I need to replace these nylocks. They've been used a few times and they're just not holding anymore. So let me fix that and then on the road we are. So we're cruising in. On the list of things to do is definitely going to be wash the truck, especially the windshield. And like I mentioned earlier, get some fuel. The gauge is a little off, so I should definitely have enough to get in, but definitely need to fuel up soon. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention was I tightened that bolt up, and I can definitely feel a difference. The steering's a lot better now, so uh, definitely a good deed done. Now time for my drive to work bagel. So I made it to work, about 180 miles on the truck so far this week. Everything's good, except I'm starting to realize there's a swinging in the back end when I'm stopping. After a little bit of thinking, I think I figured it out. So our gauge was at zero. We just put in uh, 22 and a half oh, gallons God. there. And uh, I gauge probably up to half. I also want to show the mileage. My trip mileage is 162.8. And that's pretty much all my daily driver mileage. Maybe I put like another 20, 25 on before I reset it. Call it about 20. Gauge is like a half tank off, but we'll clean the interior on this. But uh, these are our important numbers to match and remember for when we calculate mileage. Day five of the Bronco being my daily driver, and it hasn't moved from that spot. I took the blue truck to a different Ford dealership who was able to check it out a bit quicker, and uh, turns out it does have a blown trans. So, I'm in talks with Ford to figure out what uh, they could do about that and help me out. We'll have a different video on that. But uh, yeah, I was driven around and moved the blue truck, so this one kind of sat for the day. Don't worry though, tomorrow's another day. So we're on week two of driving this thing around. And I'll be honest, Monday, Tuesday, I really didn't touch it much. I uh, had some jobs going on near me. So I was driving around the work truck, brought that home over the weekend. I was able to go right to my job site Monday. And uh, this thing sat. But Wednesday, Thursday, I've been putting some miles on, cruising around. And I was starting to feel something a little weird in the back end when I was braking. So I went to go check on my brakes this afternoon. There's also a spot where I thought like maybe my drive shaft was having issues, but I'll show you what I found. I was putting this together, the e-brake kit, and for whatever reason, I was missing hardware. So uh, I just got some stuff from Tractor Supply. And uh, you can't see there, but it's starting to loosen up. So uh, not good. That side actually lost the top bolt and shifts a bit more. This side isn't too bad. A little wiggle when you hit the brakes, but not great at all. And that side's missing the top and wheels even more. So drive shaft looked good. 
I mean, probably could use some grease, but uh, felt tight. So this is definitely what I've been feeling. And what I'm gonna do about this is go and get some locking hardware from Tractor Supply. Maybe even some Loctite. There's not a lot of room on the end of those uh, nuts, but we'll see. If I get a little bit longer of a nut, and uh, or a little longer of a bolt, I'm sorry, and put that through, I think we'll be good. Other thing I forgot to mention was, uh, it looks like this inner seal here is leaking. That's brand new, so that's a bit of a bummer. Never had them leak on the rear before, so maybe I'll get to replacing that this weekend. Not a big deal, but annoying, but here, I'll show you how much this moves. So that's exactly what I felt in the back there. So, caught it early, no big deal. Got some new hardware, and I think the issue was last time I did this, tractor supply didn't have any lock washers. So, go throw that on there, tighten this up, and uh, hopefully we'll be good to go. As for the leaking wheel seal, that I'll have to address later on. But for now, this will get us back and kicking. So let's get to it. So I'm driving into work, it's Friday morning, truck's been running good, and last night I had a little issue with the brakes. Brakes loosened up, they're kind of sliding around when it came to a stop, some weird stuff. No big deal, got some locking hardware, fixed it up. Today I go to drive, get out of Kara's driveway, and there's like a little bit of a thud. It almost sounds like the caliper shifted from where I tightened it at, no big deal. I'm like, alright, I'll just have to go weld it in place. So then I'm going down the road, I have to come to a stop for uh, construction or something. And it feels like a thud, some stuff goes into place. Like, I don't know if a wheel bearing blew out, but uh, I put it in reverse. Well, first I try to give it a little gas, it's like locked up. Like, that's weird. So I put it in reverse. The truck's able to go in reverse, then it drives, and it drives absolutely fine at speed. But at low speeds, it like thuds and uh, kind of feels like it locks up. So I'm thinking maybe those calipers are moving around or something. I'm not 100% sure what it is. But I'm going to see if I can just kind of coast into work because I'm not too far away and just check on it there. Wish me luck. I think I found the issue. Right over there we got a wear into the rim. That bolt had gone missing at some point so uh, we'll have to replace that. So I went and I ordered the proper bolts from a part house down the street. They're supposed to be in this afternoon. They were not. Luckily, the local Ace Hardware to the rescue. I got one that fit. Put that in with a little bit of Loctite and I also went and tightened the rest of them, which were all slightly loose. And uh, I learned some stuff online that those are torqued pretty high, it's supposed to be like 125 foot pounds. And they also come with Loctite. So you either apply your own Loctite or get a new bolt that has Loctite on it each time. So uh, the more you know. Let's get going home. It's Friday. All right, guys. So it's Saturday. We've got about uh, 400 and something miles on the truck. I'll check in and give you a final number in a little bit. But I do want to get a couple things done today. And the first thing I think I'm going to tackle since it's a little bit rainy out is taking off the back tires and filling them with more airsoft beads because the back has a rumble about 55. From there, I'll see where the night goes, where the weather goes and see what else I get done. Wouldn't be against getting some of this mud off of here, filling it up with gas and giving our first miles per gallon update. So uh, yeah, we'll see where the night takes us and we'll go from there. So I split my bead lock, took all the nuts off. I'm gonna do all new studs because I strip these out pretty frequently, putting them back together. It's just so much to pull this down. You can see how far it has to get pulled. And to get it to seal nice, it's gotta be pretty tight. So uh, I got all new studs I'm gonna put on, all new nuts. And then these are the BBs I've been using. I put, so this is about uh, 600 grams, 1.3 pounds roughly. And I had already had some in the tires. There's already some in here. So this will be additional. And like I said, I put them in the front. 
and it smoothed out the front a lot i can noticeably see the difference in the rear so hopefully this will do the trick and uh we'll get a better high speed drive from the truck all right let's see how good i am can i hold the camera and knock out studs I think I might have drifted with the camera, but uh, you get the idea. I'll call that a win. Before I forget, let me just start with getting these in, and then we'll go and reassemble. So I've mounted these bead locks a handful of times. I get these O-rings from Trailworthy Fab, and I stretch them out a little bit, but no matter what, they're a little bit tight. And putting it together is just kind of a, you know, bit of a cluster you're fighting to get it where it needs to be so they recommend using super glue i cleaned up the rims and just have this cheap harbor freight super glue and i've got to tell you this is the easiest way to do this usually at the end here it just kind of ends up sitting where it needs to do or where it needs to be at and it gets squished in when you put the top on but not with the super glue everything stays right in place the first half's easy you just go super glue halfway around stick the o-ring in the second half, you kind of have to walk it, but uh, it's been super easy so far, so I'll show you guys. Yeah, so this is the hardest part right here, just trying to get that. And with the super glue, it really becomes no issue. So I just put that in there, then just hold it in place for like 10, 15 seconds, I'm hoping. And that is that. Could have probably used a little right there, but That'll work. I'll rub a little Vaseline around the top and we'll get this thing mounted. I will say it all went together a lot nicer with new studs. Didn't have to worry about stripping any. So let's see if we have any leaks. 15 PSI. Spray this thing down with soapy bubbles. Nothing bubbling. I'm going to go stand it upright and double check, but, uh, Glue in the O-ring and new studs is what I would recommend every time. You only get a few good Titans out of these studs, so uh, definitely worth just replacing them for the money. So, 14.9, oh, I think there might be a little leak in the connector, but we'll see. I'll stand it up and check. First time the Bronco's been on a road with uh, multiple high-speed lanes there in a long time. Maybe this would be the better way to look at that. So, uh, other than a short burst of highway by my house, so pretty interesting driving good you definitely feel like balance the rear, rear tires easily goes past 55 now so now we're looking like 55 60 set uh, i haven't hit 70 yet but it's pretty good and uh i think this opens into three or four lanes in each direction so that'll be interesting but uh overall pretty impressed let me get back to driving it's that time time to get some fuel in the diesel and for a mileage that's where we're at and for a trip meter, we're about there. So I know I recorded last time uh, how many miles I had on my trip. So this will allow us to do some quick math and find out my uh, miles per gallon. This is also about the entire time I've been driving this thing around daily, minus like 25 miles or so. So I'm almost at about 500. Build this thing up. And uh, that's what we're looking at for the damage though. So we'll see what that is. So we've been driving it, things have been doing well. And today I've got a new passenger, my dog Figgy. I've got her with Kara, and this will be her first extended Bronco ride. So let's see how she likes it. I'll start with just turning it on. Uncomfortable, uncomfortable. It'll be okay, Figgy. Let's enjoy the ride. Came to our first uh, stop. Figgy's crowding the center console, wanting to come hang out, but overall pretty good. She doesn't seem to mind the truck. Ride one complete. Vicky found her spot sitting in the uh, middle bench, and she's ready to go play with my dog Kimber. So uh, that'll be it for daily driving today. Let's see what the miles are quick before we get out. Uh, five, almost 540, plus another 25 or so at the beginning. Overall, not bad. All right. 701 miles, and we're still driving this thing around. 
it's been a pretty uneventful couple uh, week and a two, so I uh, haven't got a lot of footage, but it's still cruising and uh, we'll definitely get some more in the next couple days. Always something daily driving. Look at this lock. How long is that thing? I'm gonna leave that for now. Didn't think that nail went all the way through, but uh, apparently it did. A little bit of soapy bubbles on there was bubbling. So I ran over to AutoZone quick. Got a quick uh, plug kit. I don't know why this won't focus, there we go. And uh, yeah, I'll go plug this thing quick and uh, we'll be on our way. I forgot how thin these tires are because this did go right in there pretty easy. So. Not bad. All right, put the plug in. All plugged up. Gonna snip it and we're good. While I was out, also grabbed another can of this R134A. I only used one last time, kind of as a proof, proof of concept on the truck. And it charged it, but just not as cold as it should be. I think it was a little on the lower side. So with this, hopefully this is everything I need. Third fill up, uh, I can check the mileage on this one too, actually. So we'll do that. The truck's pretty empty, so this thing vapor locked a little bit. It was kind of a pain to get fuel in it. But uh, got it going, so we're good. This truck really doesn't need an interior detail, but first let's see what our mileage looks like. I was at 442.5 last time I filled up. 753.3. All right. 28.378 gallons. Uh, pretty good, so I left five in the tank on that one. All right. Another trip home, another hour 10. Um, I know on Super Swamper's website, there's a way to go and set your tire pressure based off the temp after riding them around. So I'm looking to that, about 135. Kind of a rainy, wet day out, but uh, I think we'll to scrub down the daily driver and clean this thing up. So, uh, getting back some off-roading soon, and the Bronco is going to be retired from being a daily for the Super Duty again until that blows another trance. But uh, until then, it's going to be a wheeler. So to go and celebrate, got the Insta360 up there. We're going to do some cool footage this afternoon, hopefully. So that was it. Wednesday, I went and picked up my Super Duty, brought it home, drove pretty good. I hooked it up to the trailer loaded the Bronco up and we went to AOAA for Trail Fest 2024. It was a great trip. The Bronco did like 50 miles there of trail riding after going and doing 900 plus on the streets. So overall, I can't complain. The truck really impressed me. And even though there was a few little odds and ends, really not too bad for what it is. Thank you guys for watching. And if you want to see more, including this off-road trip, be sure to subscribe. Have a good one, guys.